Every once in a while, the mainstream media glances up from whatever vampire superhero reboot prequel they're regurgitating and realizes that there's this huge group of Christians openly trying to subvert our government and replace it with a Handmaid's Tale-style dystopia, and maybe they should acknowledge that. Well, such is the case with Shiny Happy People, an amazing new documentary miniseries on Amazon Prime that looks at the dark side of the Duggar family of ex-teen kids and counting fame, as well as the IBLP, the fundamentalist ministry that undergirds their twisted family dynamic. Well, among the voices featured on this series is that of my guest tonight. Chad Harris grew up in the IBLP. He shares his experiences on TikTok under the account Arch Radish, as well as on this documentary. And he's here tonight to share them with us. So, Chad, thanks for coming on the show. And thanks for everything that you're doing to expose this abusive lunacy. Oh, thanks for having me, Noah. And hey, it's a huge honor to talk to you. I've been listening for years. Right on, right on. Well, yeah, you know, we met a couple of years ago at the American Atheist Convention in Atlanta. I believe you were there on the TikTok panel. Is that correct? I was not on that panel, but a lot of my friends were. I'm uh, good friends, well, with pretty much everybody on that panel. But I've been telling my story on TikTok for quite some time, and we've all kind of gathered a little community around that. We all have different experiences, of course, you know, and how we were engaged with religion, you know, before we all became atheists or before we all became publicly known as atheists. And yeah, they're just a really great bunch. I really am proud of them. Yeah, I've met some amazing people. It's, it's always like that at these conventions. You you meet so many amazing people and you're like, okay, well, that's 27 people I need to interview. And then, <laughs> yeah, some of them take a little while. So, okay. So obviously one could spend four hour long episodes answering this question and just really scratch the surface. But in broad strokes for people who haven't seen the documentary, can you tell us what is the IBLP? Is it a church? Is it a religion? What, what, what even is this? It's so much bigger than any of those things, actually. It's an entire organization It was started in the 60s and 70s by a man named Bill Gothard, who essentially just as a graduate from Wheaton College, came up with this idea for a system he called the Institute in Basic Youth Conflicts, where he took a whole bunch of the societal upheaval that came about through, you know, integration, through the uh, feminist movement, through all the different movements of the 60s and 70s, civil rights and what have you, and determined that to try to appeal to the conservative narrow-minded folks out there, that the real problem with America was that people were disrespecting authority. And if the youth of today would just start to learn to respect authority again, then our country would be great. And if that sounds familiar, it's the same song, different verse today. But he was doing it before it was cool, as it were. So he started the Institute in Basic Youth Conflicts in the 60s and 70s, and eventually expanded that into the Institute in Basic Life Principles, which came about when he developed his idea of core principles that every Christian needed to have in their life to be successful. From there, he stumbled into the homeschooling movement in the 70s and 80s. And that was when things really took off when he expanded it into the Advanced Training Institute of America, or ATIA. And that was when IBLP really hit the biggest that they've ever been in, well, frankly, in in their entire history. Okay, so... Yeah, it, it's a really complicated thing to try to get your head around what all this organization is. I My two-word definition after watching the, the documentary was fucking victim factory, but we'll we'll get there. So I want to hear more about your story growing up around this. So first of all, did you grow, this is obviously heavily associated with the Duggar family. Did you grow up in one of these huge quiverful families? Not at first. I grew up in a relatively normal, and I say that in the broadest terms possible, relatively normal, independent fundamental Baptist family. My dad was an independent fundamental Baptist preacher, and I was actually the fourth of four children to start with. I was kind of born sometime after my older brother. I was an unplanned child, and my folks took the opportunity to let me know that at every moment they could. But when I was about six or seven years old, my mother went to an OBGYN who convinced her to join the Quiverful movement. And for those not familiar, Quiverful is just simply the idea that Christians should try to take over the world by overpopulating it. The idea is that you have a Quiverful of arrows, aka children, that you're able to shoot out against Satan And you should trust God to give you as many arrows or ammunition as possible to do so. So this actual OBGYN told my mother that she should consider turning over how many children that she had to the Lord. And so, yeah, seven years after I was born, I had two younger siblings. And so I became the fourth of six. 
So it was one of the things that was really heavily promoted in the IBLP because from the Quiverful movement, we went straight into the IBLP itself. The IBLP borrowed a lot of ideas from the Quiverful movement and Bill Gothard taught that, you know, having as many children as possible would bring about the societal change and the respect of authority that he had been teaching all along. Matter of fact, they didn't touch on this a whole lot in the documentary, but they would actually have entire choirs full of children that were purported to have been born from reverse vasectomies. So, oh you know, after after children were conceived, after the, the father had a reverse vasectomy, they would, you know, grow up and like train them to sing in these choirs to show like, see how many people have, you know, really um, answered the call of God or whatever. Wow. And it was just sick. <laughs> All right. So you've already touched on the homeschooling being sort of at the core of the growth of this organization. So can you tell me a little bit about your education? Were you pulled out of public schools to, to be homeschooled or were you always homeschooled? I was always homeschooled. My older siblings had all gone to either public or Christian school at some point in their lives. But my folks, even before we got into IBLP, decided to you know try to go ahead and homeschool me from the start. They had trouble finding a curriculum. And I believe that the move into ATI, the homeschooling branch of IBLP, came about because they were looking for something that would work for both my older brother and myself. Bill Gothard was a consummate salesman, and he promised that if you followed ATI, you would receive a pristine Christian education. You would even have enough education to qualify for pre-law and pre-med if you followed his bizarre-ass teachings. So I went from doing relatively normal Christian homeschooling stuff, which in and of itself is a whole subject, Mm -hmm. to going by these just weird ramblings of Bill Gothard in which he would take the entire Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and try to pull all these academic subjects out of every line of the Sermon on the Mount, which... It, you can't do that. Spoilers, but uh, no, yeah. It, all you end up doing is coming up with you know total nonsense. Yeah, they, in the documentary, they they talk about these these wisdom books that ATI students were given instead of like an education. Is is there anything that you can recall specifically from those books that that might give the audience a sense of what we're talking about here? Well, one thing that comes to mind immediately is that there was always a medicine resource. And I use medicine in just the broadest terms because it was what Bill Gothard considered to be medicine. Bill Gothard actually thought he could come up with a way to uh, train people to have actual medical degrees without going to college. Oh, Jesus. He tried to start an apprenticeship program in like an old hospital in Nashville at one point. It was just this completely bizarre thing. But one thing in one of the medicine resources, and I believe this was in the wisdom booklet that had to do with uh, giving us this day our daily bread and the Lord's Prayer, he went off for several pages on constipation. Like the entire medical resource from that passage that he pulled was all about how you should always eat whole wheat bread. And he just went like completely into these graphic discussions of, you know, the effects of constipation and how it can affect your spiritual life. And it was just like for I think I was like nine or 10 years old at that point. And I was like, this is fucking disgusting. (laughs) But of course, you couldn't say anything because you would be physically harmed if you did so. Right. And and that's what you're getting instead of like you know, sex ed or, or, or something like that. That's crazy. Okay. So now obviously I, I feel like I'd be remiss to talk about this subject at all without talking about the abuse fostered by IBLP. So to the extent that you're comfortable talking with us about it, of course, what kind of abuse did you experience and witness growing up around this organization? So IBLP was, you know, very focused on authority, like I said, and to really emphasize that, they would teach parents how to physically spank and I'll just go ahead and say it, abuse their children until they absolutely could not put up a resistance anymore. And this is one thing I know that they cover in the documentary, a concept called blanket training in which they would put infants on a blanket, entice them to crawl off of it and punish them when they did. I do remember seeing that growing up quite a bit. I was too old when we got in to really experience that myself. But I do remember that I was spanked and abused for long periods of time physically. And the goal, according to my folks, when they did it, was to get me to stop registering an emotional response at all. If I cried out, I would just be beaten until I didn't. If I expressed any kind of sadness, I would be beaten until I didn't. And I got really good at blocking out pain. 
which led to a lot of health effects later in life. Oh, <laughs> you can just imagine. Yeah. But this was very common among a lot of kids I saw growing up. And I always felt like I kind of got off easy because I knew of other kids who were very, very much like physically harmed and in some cases, you know, developed even worse physical maladies throughout their entire life. And it was all in support of this idea that if you don't have an ultimate authority in your home, which in most cases would be, you know, whoever the oldest man was in the home, then everything would fall apart. So you had a divine mandate to hurt your children. It was just sick. Wow. Yeah. And and we're not even touching on the misogyny of it as, as well, which is, of course, a, a huge focus of the documentary. Certainly. So when did you first start thinking that there was something wrong with how you were being raised and these religious teachings? It really came after I became an adult. I didn't know very much. And another aspect of ATI and IBLP was that they really didn't encourage going to college at all or seeking any higher education. Your higher education was promised to come from some new scheme that Gothard would come up with by the time you got there, whether it be working at his many training centers across the world or at headquarters itself or going through whatever semblance of a medical or law school that they purported to have, you know, you weren't really encouraged to do higher education. So when I left home at 19, I really didn't have any direction where to go. And I started working for a fundamentalist church. And there was an abuse scandal that happened in that church. And I knew it was wrong. And I knew that the pastor of that church who perpetrated it was unfit for ministry, but everyone ignored it and let him continue on as pastor. And that was when it really struck me that, hey, there is something bad wrong happening here. And I got to looking into a lot of the pastors that my dad idolized growing up. And this is about the time the internet became pretty ubiquitous in the late 2000s. And I started seeing all these stories of abuse and of just children being harmed and all these arrests that kept coming about. And I asked my dad about it and he said, well, we just don't talk about things like that because it's bad for the ministry. And that was when I said, well, I didn't sign up to hurt people. And around this time, Bill Gothard was also accused of sexual harassment of many of his uh, workers. And I asked my dad about that too. And he just refused to hear anything about it. And that was when it really started sinking in that I'm involved in something that is built to harm people and I'm being lied to about it. And that was when I really started to find my way out. I had already graduated. I was no longer in the homeschooling program and Gothard himself didn't have a huge sway in my, my adult life, but the teachings did. Right. And everything I grew up with, I had to start questioning. And it was a long, hard deconstruction process, which frankly, you know, led to a lot of questioning, a lot of seeking out how I could make religion work in my own life. And through resources like y'all's podcasts and just some amazing books, you know, that I've been recommended by friends and, you know, a combination of people just gently explaining things that I had never learned in school to me to also being allowed to make fun of the religious stuff that I had uh, been raised in. I now very openly and publicly identify as atheist and I could not be happier with that station in life. Awesome. Well, I'm you know glad that we could play some small role in comforting you on your way out. Now, I got the impression from the documentary that your family or much of your family is still in this. Yes, unfortunately, even if they aren't currently involved with IBLP or ATI, they're still very sympathetic toward it. Because one thing about fundamentalist Christianity institutions if you start to question any of them, the whole thing falls apart. I'm living proof of that. Right. So they just refuse to hear it or will not hear it or think that every bad thing that's said about any of the stuff that they hold dear is an attack on them personally. So for my own sanity and the safety of everybody involved, I just... I've chosen to just, you know, go no contact with the vast majority of them and... Yeah, we haven't really spoken in a long time. And it sucks, but freedom is a whole lot better. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really sorry to, to hear that. Now, you used the word deconstruction. I think that's a great word for this process. So, so for you, what what has, you know, because you this, this cult, it seems designed to turn women into victims and men into abusers and, and men yes. into victims as well as, you know, to the extent that it can. What has been the hardest thing for you to unlearn from your upbringing? 
That is a really good question. There was a, I don't have it with me right now, but there was a song that we were taught in Alert Cadet. And for background, Alert was the pseudo-military branch of Gothard's cult. I mean, this thing just went so many different directions. But Alert was the military style branch where they would take young men and run them through obstacle courses and scream at them like Marines and stuff like that. And in order in order to toughen them up and, well, in my opinion, build what led to January 6th. Yeah. But there was a, uh, a verse that we learned that we sang every day in the Alert Cadet program for younger kids. And the line was, we are casting down imaginations that rise up against God's hand and boldly bringing to subjection every thought to his command. So the goal of the cult was not only to bring you under subjugation and to bring women under subjugation to men and bring men under subjugation to Gothard himself, but also to make your own brain hold you in line. Like the idea was that your thoughts could not be trusted. So you had to constantly examine every single thought you had and make sure it was approved. Not just every word, deed or action, but every thought could potentially be something that could cause you to be harmed. We were threatened with illness. We were threatened with bankruptcy. We were threatened with all these horrible things if we even had a stray thought that didn't fall in line with what the cult taught us. So it was really good at teaching us how to keep ourselves in line. And breaking out of that brainwashing was probably the worst part because, you know, as I was starting to question things and, you know, when I first started, deconstruction wasn't even a term. Mm -hmm. I just uh, started out saying, well, everything I was raised with seems to be wrong on some level. So I'm just going to go back to the basics, which at that time was, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Let's just see what happens from there. And after a year of trying to make that fit, I had to tell myself, I'm going to have to break down what I believe even further, aren't I? <laughs> and that was the start of my journey to atheism. But even getting to that place where I could be comfortable questioning the very core beliefs that I was raised with, even as a child, my brain had done such a good job keeping me from ever doing that, that giving myself the freedom to do that was the first, the hardest and the biggest hurdle. Wow. I, I, again, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of your ability to share this the story with us. And I know you're speaking to a lot of listeners that have very similar backgrounds. So I, I, I just don't want to thank you again for that. Now you've, you've kind of hinted at this and I, I would say like probably the most terrifying images, at least in the documentary are these shots of the alert Academy, this military wing of this cult. So I want to ask you explicitly, what is the end goal for IBLP? The end goal from IBLP, as they stated, was to, well, essentially world domination, as I said in the trailer and, and in the uh, documentary itself. We were taught that we would be the generation that would bring America back to God and would eventually, you know, lead to a chain of events bringing on the second coming of Jesus Christ, where he could set up his kingdom here on earth. That was what we were taught. Now, personally, I believe that the real goal of IBLP was to make Bill Gothard rich. <laughs> right. But but that's not how it was sold to us. And when you, you know, get a bunch of impressionable young people, especially young men who are taught that, you know, they're inherently special because of the fact that they are men, they identify as men, they've been assigned that, and they have some kind of spiritual authority over others. And you run them through all these drills and all these things to try to, you know, build them up as like some kind of warrior for Christ. And that is literally what they called us. You know, mm -hmm. we were called warriors. We were called the Christian Marines. They were like, you know, other Christians are just lukewarm, but you are the cream of the crop. You are the ones who will absolutely bring on this new era of God. It was, I mean, that's heady stuff, especially when, you know, you're, for lack of a better term, you're a dumb teenager, you know? Right. And to be instilled with this and to be told that you're better than everybody else, that is shocking. That is dangerous. And that is exactly what you see in organizations like the Proud Boys and similar groups today, because this shit works. Cults use these tactics over and over because they work. Yeah. And until we realize that, we're not going to solve the problem of why it keeps happening. So now, is there anything that you wish had been included in the documentary that wasn't? Oh, there's so many. And I know that they couldn't get into everything. I, 
100% am pleased with what they did cover in four episodes. It's really hard to cover what you need to because anytime I've tried to explain this to folks, I sound like I have a push pin board yeah. with crazy strands of yarn going all over the place. Like, you gotta believe me, it's a cult. Well, it, it, there's so many acronyms. Yeah, and, yeah exactly. Right. It was designed to be confusing. I, I thoroughly believe that. One thing that I wish that they had have gone into was more of the misogyny and more of how men were conditioned to be abusers. And for folks like me, who I never really matched up to what their <laughs> version of manliness was, I'm a boring straight white male, but I was also a very nerdy kid. I didn't have much interest in the outdoors or athletics or anything. You know, I had a Commodore 128 that I loved to play around on. And, Fuck, you know, yeah. that was my toy growing up, right? So when I was out there doing all this stuff with Alert Cadet, I very clearly did not do well. I failed at most of the obstacles. I fainted when I tried to rappel off the tower. And I was told that the reason that I failed at all this was because I was not spiritual enough. And it wasn't because I had any physical conditions or any kind of proclivities to not do this sort of thing. It was because I didn't study my Bible enough. And if I just had enough faith, I would be able to do all this. Well, that was complete and utter nonsense. But even though it never really quite worked with me because I just simply physically could not do all that, I do know of many other boys who are of my age who went all in on that to try to please Bill Gothard, their fathers, and to not be a disappointment. And they turned out to be very abusive people later on. And, yeah. you know, I, and I don't want to make this sound like, oh, the men had it so bad, because as bad as we had it under those unrealistic expectations, women had it a million times worse, because this organization was also meant specifically to harm women. The rules were much worse for young women and girls and everything. And as you see in the documentary, horrific abuse came about because of that. So I don't want to make light of that. But it was there was just nothing that the cult touched that was not poisoned by their damn sense of authority and the and the organizational structure, the misogyny that was involved in it. It ruined everyone's life. So what do you I mean, I feel like there's there are several fairly obvious answers, but I'd still like to hear your opinion on this. What, what do you hope to accomplish by speaking out? First and foremost, I want the cult gone. It's been around long enough. It still exists today against all odds. And I think part of it is because they've enjoyed obscurity in plain sight. And one thing that really bothers me, and the reason I think that it has been able to exist for so long, is that many people tend to have blinders, especially in our society, where they think that anything religious is good on some level. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, religion does not equal good. Uh, in cases like IBLP, Many people, especially, you know, when I was deconstructing and I was going to more mainstream churches and trying to get people to understand what I've been through, I had actual pastors telling me, well, yeah, but was it really that bad? Or was it just, you know, a little bit of a stricter version of Christianity that doesn't work for us, but it works for some people? And I was telling them, no, I was in a goddamn cult. Like, I right. wish you would listen. And now people are starting to maybe pick up a little bit on it. I have received tons of messages from people who have grown up in this, tons of people who said, I never realized it was as bad as it was. Well, that's because everyone treated it like, oh, well, it doesn't work for me, but, you know, they seem happy. All these children seem so well behaved, especially with the Duggars being the poster children for this cult. Everyone looked at the Duggars, you know, oh, 19 kids, but they all love each other and everything runs so smoothly in their household and they right. clearly love each other while the cameras are on. And one thing that I love about how this documentary really pursues that is that they showed no, it was all a bunch of lies. And these lies permeated the entire cult, not just the one family. So I want the cult gone. I, I want them to be exposed for what they are. I want people to stop buying their materials. I want them to be shunned. I want them to be shut down because any other child that is hurt by the teachings of this cult and that man, Bill Gothard, is one child too many. I have said this from the time I started speaking out publicly till now. It needs to stop now. Another thing I want people to take away from this is to go back, look at the Christian nationalism problem we have in this country right now. If you go back far enough, you will find a nexus to IBLP in all of this. They have been playing this game 
since the 80s and 90s. And many powerful politicians, many powerful policymakers are embroiled in all this. I'll give you one example. Michael Ferris, who is the uh, leader of uh, Homeschool Legal Defense, which came along about the same time as ATI, had close ties with Bill Gothard from the very beginning. This was a man who actually co-wrote the 1776 project that Donald Trump himself commissioned. And it was overturned by Joe Biden on the very first day of the Biden administration. So these people who have been involved with this cult have had the ears of politicians all along. And the sooner we realize that, and how that came about, the sooner I think we can address some of the problems we have today. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. And then that, that's the real shame of it is that the documentary, it, it really like tucked a lot of that stuff. And, and again, I don't say this as a criticism to the documentarians. They were trying to cover a lot of stuff, but really it just stuck all that stuff in the last 10 minutes and like, oh, by the way, that's also the reason the country's burning down. <laughs> now, so given the demographics of our listenership, it's almost a guarantee that right now you're talking to people who are going through the same process as you went through and are continuing to go through and are far earlier in that process. So is there any advice that you want to offer to them while you've got their ear? I would like to say that getting out is an accomplishment in and of itself. And if you, if you're still in IBLP or if you're in a high controlling religion or cult and you need to get out as safely as you can, because I understand that there are a lot of people who simply cannot do it safely, but as safely as you can try to find resources and try to find people who will help. They do exist out there. And if you're in a position to where you are able to share your story and you are out, I would encourage you to consider doing so. Because, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm privileged city. You know, like I said, I'm a boring, straight, white male and everything. And I have less to lose than a lot of people out there. So I figured, well, you know, it's if it can do some good, I'll share my story. But I really encourage anyone who has experienced this to go ahead, share your story on whatever platform you can. I did mine on TikTok, but there is just so many ways that you can get your voice out there. The more that we are able to go out there with our voices and to say this is wrong and people need to do something about it, the more chance we have of making a difference. Because ultimately what brings these organizations down is when enough people shine the light on them. The very reason they were able to perpetrate all this abuse for all this amount of time was because people like my dad said, we don't talk about this. And I'm here to say, if we do, it dies on the vine. Wow. Well, Chad, I, I think I, I speak for the entire audience when I express my admiration for your efforts to expose this shit and, and your willingness to to talk about, you know, some some pretty tough stuff. A quick reminder for the listeners that want to hear more from Chad, you'll find his TikTok channel linked on the show notes. And if you want to see the documentary, I highly recommend it. It's a tough watch, but it's something that everybody should see if they're able. Uh, look for Shiny Happy People, Duggar Family Secrets on Amazon Prime. Chad, thanks so much for your time. Noah, thank you so much. I really do appreciate this.